Hello again gamers, welcome back for another episode of Grokking Battletech. I'm the Board Game Captain and today I'm going to be telling you how to grok the Marauder. So the Marauder is a very iconic mech. This is a mech that goes all the way back to the origins of Battletech. Uh, but of course it was one of the unseen mechs. It was one of those mechs that uh, had some issues with that whole lawsuit, um, if you're familiar. And because of it, uh, it wasn't seen for a long time until they properly redesigned it, so it was no longer infringing on another copyright. Uh, there are plenty of other videos out there if you want to find out about it, feel free to search it. Um, I have not done a video on the whole lawsuit situation, so this is not about that. So first thing I want to do is I want to give a big thank you to Sam H, who requested that I cover the Marauder in an episode of Grokking Battletech. So Sam H, this episode is for you. Uh, before I get too into this, I do want to say I've also got a ton of links in the description down below. There's a link to BoardGameCaptain.com, a great hub for all things Board Game Captain, and uh, Lynn and I have started doing some semi-regular blog posts over there. Also, there's a link to my Patreon if you're in a position to and like to support the channel. And there's a link to my Teespring store if you'd like to get yourself some Board Game Captain merch, some cool gamer gear, t-shirts, mugs, etc. Link in the description down below. Alright, so we're going to be talking about the Marauder. So I'm going to be going through all the variants of the Marauder, uh, giving my general opinion on them. There are a lot, so I'm going to have to go pretty quickly over, over many of them. Uh, but when I'm done with that, now normally in addition to, to going over some suggested uh, suggested Lance as well as a suggested Mech Warrior to pilot the, uh, the particular mech that I'm covering, I usually give a, a variant that I would make of the particular mech. But in this case, the Marauder is a mech that has a ludicrous number of variants already in existence and all the things I would have done for it have already been done. So instead, I'm going to give my two favorite Marauders. I'm going to give a, a specific Lance for each of them, and I'm going to give a specific Mech Warrior recommended for each of them instead of doing my own custom variant. Because again, the things I would have done are already in here. Okay, so let's get into it. So now Sarna lists the default version of the Marauder as the MAD-3R. Now, it's a little weird that they have the MAD-3R as the default version when the 1R was the original model. Uh, but that's because uh, after the Star League era, this was the more common variant that was used throughout the Succession Wars. Uh, that's why they put it as the default. But I am going to be going over all of them. So, now, this is a... This is a... Star League era mech, which means it can be used in every time period because they could show up, uh, you know, because the Star League era is the earliest time period and they could show up at any time they are on. Uh, so the basic Marauder is a heavy mech that walks around with a decent amount of firepower, especially for its time period, and a really good amount of armor. So this is a long range fire mech. This is what uh, they generally classify as a sniper mech now. It had two PPCs, two medium lasers, and an auto cannon 5. So this is a fairly decent amount of firepower for the time period. Uh, the biggest problem with this armament is that it did not really have the heat sinks to support it. So it's got a total of 16 single heat sinks. And, you know, the issue there is, is just firing those two PPCs means you're going to be overheating. Uh, so there's, I mean, literally every other turn you're going to be having to not fire a bunch of these weapons. Um, alpha striking is going to be kind of rare uh, be, because the PBCs do run quite hot. Uh, that said, for the time period, a lot of the mechs, especially ones with a lot of uh, energy weapons, did run hot. So this is a common thing um, for that time period. It's just that this particular model, the 3R, didn't age very well because in later time periods with double heat sinks and such, this is one that um, would not stand up very well. It's why its battle value is fairly affordable for such a heavy mech at only 1363. But that said, for the size of the mech, the speed is pretty decent. And the armor is really decent. So now let's talk about the 1R. This is the earlier version um, that had case ammo, uh, case to protect the, the autocannon ammo bins and ferrofibrous armor. Otherwise, it's basically identical. Um, the 3R, of course, is the um, reduced tech version for the Succession War time period because they no longer have the tech for ferrofibrous armor or case systems. 
But uh, that said, this is a slightly better version of the 3R. The 1R is an improvement. Both of these, though, are, don't really have the kind of wow factor you're looking for when you want to pick a Marauder, unless you're specifically playing in the Succession War time period, at which point, yeah, they, they're plenty good for that time period. But in later time periods, they don't really have the wow factor you might want. Now, let's talk about the MAD 2R. So the 2R uh, gets double heat sinks, but then they also upgraded the PPCs to <laughs> extended range PPCs, ER PPCs. All right, so yeah, this means better range, but it also means a lot more heat, and those double heat sinks can just cover the two ER PPCs. I personally think, it, uh, in the case of the 2R, I would have been happier with them upgrading the Autocannon 5 to a larger gun and leaving the regular PPCs there so you could you could better manage the heat and fire every round. Uh, but then again, I was not on that mech design team. Okay, so next we're going to talk about the MAD-2T, as in Tango. This is a Torian Concordat version. Now, the Torian Concordat uh, version of the Royal Marauder swaps the standard autocannon for an LB-5X autocannon. Otherwise, it's uh, yeah, it's basically the same. So now I'm not a huge fan of the LB5X autocannon because uh, firepower wise, it's really not very impressive. Generally speaking, only three of those five points of damage on average will hit the target. Um, it, for the LBX autocannons, I much prefer a higher caliber, something where you're going to have a lot more hitting, uh, like a 10 or even a 20. Um, but this does have a really good range, and it does, of course, give you that bonus to hit. So, you know, uh, it might be a personal preference thing. Now, the next one we're going to talk about is the MAD-3D. The MAD-3D uh, swaps out the Autocannon 5 for a large laser, and then adds in four more heat sinks. Um... Yeah, this this still has a heat problem. Uh, this this is a total energy uh, weapon boat here, and it's it's a little bit yeah, it, it definitely overheats. Okay, so the next model is the MAD three L. Um, this one was apparently storyline wise built for House Liao. Uh, I forgot to mention by the way, the three D was built specifically by House Davian, uh, but the three L. Is another Succession War time period version of the Marauder. It's got two more regular heat sinks um, and swaps out one of the PPCs for a large laser. Uh, this is what, probably one of my least favorite versions. Um, it's even less impressive than the standard 3R. So yeah, I'm not, not a fan of this one. All right, so the next version is a Free, we free Worlds League variant, the MAD 3M. Now the 3M uh, simply pulls out the arm-mounted PPCs and, and swaps them with large lasers. Uh, this also adds in four more regular heat sinks. Uh, even though this is a downed damage version, uh, this is actually one of the best, in my opinion, from the Succession War time period, because even though it does less damage overall, this is one where you can fire all its weapons almost continuously. Uh, it's actually quite good um, because with the regular version, with the 3R, you have to stop firing one of both of the PPCs to, to cool down. This one can fire all day long. Uh, so I, I actually quite like this one, believe it or not. Uh, the next one I want to talk about is a Clan Tech Retrofit, the MAD-3RC. So this is a Clan version of the Classic Marauder. Remember, being a Star League Defense Force era uh, mech, some of the these mechs did go with the clan when they left inner sphere space so um they came up with their own version of the marauder being a venerable design as it was so the clan version uh uses a lot of clan tech it swaps the ppcs for a pair of uh clan tech large pulse lasers uh the autocannon is swapped for an ultra autocannon 5 and it added in a case uh this is a really decent mech um if you were to use it for the inner sphere for clan that the problem is uh it, this is this is obviously meant to be um a second line mech it's not a main line clan mech this is one you would use if you're playing clan forces who are garrisoning an already captured planet um so actually in 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 a clan force this is not one you'd see very much uh you really do have to move in my opinion uh 
timeline wise a bit forward to find the really impressive versions of the marauder though bear with me because once you get there they are pretty freaking amazing so the next one we're going to talk about is the mad 4x now this is an experimental version and it replaces both of the uh, ppcs with binary, binary laser cannons i'm not very impressed by bin binary laser cannons uh, it replaces the uh, Auto Cannon 5 with an SRM-6, which interestingly enough means that you're going to have to get a lot closer to really use these weapons on your opponent. This is, makes it a much more close range kind of uh, mech. And then also it used a prototype ND Steel ch Endo Steel chassis. The biggest upgrade with the 4X though is that it comes with double heat sinks. And double heat sinks are what it's all about. You need some double heat sinks to keep the heat in line for your Marauder. So the next one we're going to talk about is the MAD 5CS, which was uh, a Comstar version of the Marauder that was specifically developed for the Battle of Tukiad, uh, which of course is one of the most famous battles in all of Battletech lore. So the MAD 5CS, uh, first thing that you do is it has an ER PPC and a medium pulse laser in each arm. Um, it also swaps out the autocannon 5 for an LB-10X autocannon. This is actually, again, this is the size of autocannon where I start to like the LBX autocannons. LBX-10s are pretty decent. Uh, and it has two tons of ammo for it. So that's, that is really good. It also, of course, has double heat sinks. This is a very good version of the Marauder. This is where you start to get into the ones where, in my opinion, uh, in the clan invasion time period and later, you start getting these versions of the Marauder that are absolutely fantastic and can hold up and can be used in even later time periods. Uh, the next version we're going to talk about is the 5D. Now, all of the 5s, I just want to preface this real quick. Uh, this is where all my favorites are in the 5. Uh, the fives are generally clan invasion time period mechs, and there's a lot of good variants in here. So the MAD 5D uses some of the, the new um, improved technologies, like with an extra light engine to free up some space. And they do a lot with all the space that they freed up, all the weight they freed up from putting in the extra light engine. Uh, it comes with a pair of ER PPCs, as well as two medium pulse lasers and a large pulse laser. Uh, this is a fantastic, fantastic spread of firepower. Absolutely love it. Um, especially because this is one of the earlier designs where they start to put jump jets on a Marauder. Uh, so older Marauders, you often had the type where they would they would uh, play turret tech. They'd find a spot to hide in that, 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 that had good you know view of the battlefield, sit in a heavy forest and shoot at a lot of enemies, or just walk and try to stay at a good distance, good long range, because they, they could outrange their opponent and keep firing at them. Um, but at this point, you start to get Marauders with a slightly different purpose. So with this one, you're going to jump around to get good firing spots on top of hills and mountains to fire down with those ER PPCs. And then if your enemy comes in close to you, you're going to wait for that opportune time to jump in behind them and hit them with all of those pulse weapons which this thing has a really nice pulse weapon loadout with the, uh, the large pulse laser and the two medium pulse lasers. Uh, this could really peel off the rear armor of an enemy mech. So yeah, this is, this is a great version. Next, there is the MAD 5D DC, which removes some stuff. It takes out the, the streak launcher in the case to make room for a command console. Uh, otherwise, very similar to the 5D. Then next, we have the MAD 5L. Now, the 5L uh, is another big departure from the standard um, Marauder. This is not one I'm a huge fan of, but it is cool. It's interesting. It's got stealth armor. It's got triple strength Mimer to help this thing even speed up more, which is pretty nuts. It also has an e Guardian ECM suite uh, to help, again, with the fence. It has two ER large lasers. It has two ER medium lasers. And it has an ER PVC, making it a total energy weapon platform. Uh, this is a little different, a little uh, interesting. Again, you start to have an issue with heat, though they do have 18 double heat sinks to help you deal with that. Um, but th this is not one of my favorite versions, but it's still, it is a good version. It is really interesting, especially if you're using with the, you know, the more advanced rules so that you're using things like stealth armor. Next, we have the MAD-5M. Now, the MAD-5M, another clan invasion time period model. Uh, this is another one that uses the extra light engine to help to free up a little weight. Uh, this one, again, has, uh, has two large pulse lasers, two medium pulse lasers, and an LBX-10 autocannon. Again, another uh, decent weapon loadout. Next, we have the MAD-5R. Now, the 5R is an upgrade of the 3R. 
Uh, this one came out, though, in 3068, meaning that we are now moved so far forward that we are even past the Civil War time period. We're in the Jihad era. So uh, th this is one that I've never used because I don't usually play Jihad era, but it is it is pretty interesting. Again, we've got an extra light engine to save on uh, weight, and then, of course, the heat sinks are double strength heat sinks. So this mech comes with two ERP PCs. Uh, it has a rotary autocannon 5, which is actually quite cool. Uh, it's a cool upgrade to the autocannon 5. And also the two medium lasers. This one also has a C3 slave unit. This becomes a very good mech to use if you are making a C3 network. Uh, again, though, you got to be playing in the uh, Jihad era for the 5R. The next version we have is the 5S. Now, the 5S is back to being a clan invasion time period. This one was introduced in 3051. Uh, this variant, again, is built around the extra light engine. You can see this is kind of a theme. They were looking to free up weight to get more weapon systems and more heat sinks on this thing, which is really a good idea because you do want that. Uh, so, again, we've got the double strength heat sinks. We again have a pair of ERP PCs and medium lasers, but instead of the auto cannon, this one has a gauss rifle this is an amazing amazing mech now this is uh, a mech that is in the the feel and theme of the original version of the marauder where you're you're generally playing turret tech with it but this one does it in my opinion the best uh that gauss rifle as well as those erp pcs are just absolutely deadly and then if something gets too close to you you can alpha strike with those medium lasers just to do that extra little bit of damage in case the gauss rifle and the two erp pcs were not enough to deal with your enemy and actually with the, the double heat sinks this one can actually fire all day long uh especially since the gauss rifles don't cause a lot of heat they only do one heat each so yeah this this is a fantastic Fantastic version. Big fan of the 5S. Now, the next one is the 5T, the MAD 5T. Now, the 5T is another Jihad era version of the Marauder. It is a really good one, though. Uh, again, we're using uh, endo steel chassis and an extra light engine, and this one's got a big pulse weapon loadout. We've got two large pulse lasers, two medium pulse lasers, and then that awesome rotary auto cannon 5 uh if i did play jihad more often i would definitely use this one it is a very very cool variant the next we have is the mad 6l which is an upgrade of the 5l uh this one is introduced in 3070 and this one uses a pair of plasma rifles in the arm uh and also a ppc in uh and in, in the torso instead of an auto cannon but maintaining those medium lasers in there, um, yeah, this is a really good one. It also has a C3 slave module uh, and a Guardian ECM suite. This is a quite decent version. Next, we have the MAD-7D, which is a 3068 model with an extra light engine. This one's got two ER large lasers, two ER medium lasers, and a rotary auto cannon 5, as well as a targeting computer. That targeting computer with all those ER lasers is absolutely brutal you can target it on a specific torso location that's already taken a big hit from someone else in your lance and you can just go in for the kill really blow uh, a hole straight through an enemy mech um big fan of this one definitely definitely a good version of the marauder so the next one we have is the 7m now the 7n has a heavy ppc and an er medium laser in each arm uh, it still has the LB5X autocannon um, that a lot of its predecessors have. Almost, uh, you know, protected by case. It has 15 double heat sinks, which is just enough to fire both of those heavy PPCs without overheating. But if you're firing everything, you are going to have another heat issue. And this also is another one with jump jets. This is a phenomenal mech, but it does have a heat problem. But those two heavy PPCs with 15 damage each are brutal uh this thing can really do a lot of damage again if you're playing jihad era games now the 7r has an er pbc and a medium x pulse laser in each arm just like the 7c uh it also has a light gauss rifle uh protected by a case 2 um i think that's a little bit of an overkill for a light gauss rifle uh, and then it has a C3 slave model this is not one i'm a big fan of actually i didn't i don't really like the 7c or the 7r 
Um, then the 7S is like the 7C, but uh, this version has an ERPPC and a medium X pulse laser in each arm, uh, and then has an actual Gauss rifle in the torso. So this one I like a lot better. The 7S I think is much better than the R and the C. Then we have the 9, God, there are so many versions of the Marauder. The 9D, which is a Dark Age ver uh, version, the 9 starts to get into the Dark Age version. Uh, whether you've got ER large lasers, medium X pulse lasers, uh, a silver bullet Gauss rifle. Um, yeah, so there's there are tons. Now, I just want to say you've got you've got nines, you've got elevens, you've got uh, you've got some experimental versions. They just keep going. But I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it there just for time. Uh, because I've gone all the way through the the jihad era, and I don't ever play Dark Ages. I've not played Dark Ages once yet, so I'm going to kind of just gloss over the rest of those. But suffice to say, whatever you want a Marauder to do, there are tons of Marauders that do it. And then in addition, there's a ton of custom variants. Because again, this has been a very well-liked design in the storyline for ages. You've got versions that were used by so many different uh, characters in the storyline. So there's, for instance, there's the the MAD SD Marauder Douglas. There's the 7D Marauder Von Staskov. There's a there's several versions for the Bounty Hunter who shows up a bunch and uses several different versions of the Marauder. Uh, there's the Red Hunter version. Yeah, there's a ton. And like like I say, there's there's so many good versions. Um, I've gone over, like I said, all of the good uh, earlier time period versions other than the custom ones. But again, going to cut it right here just because of time. So I want to tell you what are my two favorite versions of Marauders. And then I'm going to, uh, with each one, I'm going to recommend a uh, Mech Warrior to use for it. And then I'm going to recommend a Lance to use for it. So the first Marauder I'm going to start with is the MAD 5M. Now, I really like this one because it's introduced in the Clan Invasion time period, uh, which means that it can be used in most time periods. The, really, the only times you can't use it are the Succession War and the uh, Star League Defense Force time period. But every other time period, this mech is available. And this is one that uh, fits that, that later kind of repurposing of the Marauder that I was talking about, where you use jump jets and you jump to get better vantage points. And then when your opponent gets close enough, you can jump in behind them. Though this one particularly focuses in on jumping behind them. So we're talking about, a, again, like all Marauders, a fairly well-armed and fairly well-armored machine that has a fairly good speed. We've got a walking of four, a running of six, a jumping of four, which is enough distance that if something tries to close the distance with you and hit you with those big guns, you can jump in behind them and just rip off all their rear armor. Uh, we've got a fairly decent amount of armor. We've got 35 in the center torso, 17 on each side torso, 18 on each leg, and 22 on each arm to help protect those main weapon packages. Uh, if anything, the the, uh, the weakest point of armor in the front is those side torsos. you got to watch out there. Uh, hopefully, your opponent won't totally rip you apart in the side torsos and take the arm off through the weaker part of the armor. Next, we have in the rear torsos, we have... 8 on either side and 10 on the center, which is actually not too bad for a rear torso. But considering that uh, hopefully you're going to be the one jumping in behind your enemy, hopefully you're not going to get hit in the rear too much. Now, uh, this mech has a great set of weapons for jumping in behind your enemy. It's got a large pulse laser and a medium pulse laser in each arm, which makes this an amazing interceptor mech. Because again, each one of those weapons... Uh, reduces the difficulty to hit the target by two. So after jumping and adding, you know, a large amount of extra difficulty, yeah, it's really nice to reduce that. Uh, very good. And then the main gun up top is an LB-10X autocannon, which, yeah, uh, again, reduces the difficulty to hit the target by one. So every weapon on this mech makes it easier to hit your target. Then we have 32 points of heat reducing capacity every round that is 16 double heat sinks uh and that is great because the thing is this you've got 10 heat from each of the large lasers that's 20 you've got eight heat total from the two medium pulse lasers that's 28 and you have two heat from the lb10x autocannon that's 30 heat at 32 points of heat reduction you are going to overheat only slightly when you jump 
and use every weapon. So walking and using every weapon, you could do all day long, but when you need to jump in behind your opponent, you're gonna overheat ever so slightly, and if you don't need to jump multiple turns in a row, you're easily gonna be able to cool back off. Uh, yeah, the MAD-5M is fantastic. I am a big fan of this mech. Uh, this is a, a really, really good mech to surprise your opponent with when they try to close the distance and rip you apart with some Mono Cannon 20s, and you just jump in their rear and um, core their mech in one turn, which can happen. Now, uh, a good mech warrior to put on this mech is Linda Lee Doherty. Now, Linda Lee Doherty uh, is normally in a wasp, but in this case, she's received a major upgrade, and we're going to be putting her in a marauder. So she's the reason she's really awesome is is twofold. First off. Uh, her stats are great. She has a two gunnery and a two piloting, and you want a high piloting uh, with someone who's going to be doing a lot of jumping around. Uh, you also want a really good gunnery with someone who's going to be doing a lot of jumping around so that you can still hit your target, so that is awesome. Granted, you're going to be giving big bonuses to one of your opponent's mechs for taking Lindley, but um, it might be worth it. And then in addition, she has an ability that will work so well with the 5M. Uh, so she has, uh, now again, she is a three cost, Mech Warrior, so you have to be playing in a game where you have agreed to use a three cost Mech Warrior, and then she is absolutely amazing for the Marauder. So, what she does is she has Combat Intuition. Now, Combat Intuition is a fantastic ability, definitely worth the three cost. It allows you to declare during the end phase, you declare one a particular enemy mech, and you take one damage to your pilots. So you're not going to want to do this a lot because taking damage to your pilot is bad. Uh, but it can be very worth it to do it at least once during the game, uh, and here's why. So during the turn, you pick one of these two effects. So the first possible effect is this unit may perform all movement, weapon, and physical attacks in that order against its target at any point before the target moves. The target has no movement modifiers, but is not immobile. Damage takes effect immediately and this unit may not make further attacks this turn. All normal modifiers to attacks against this unit apply. Or, the other effect is, this unit moves after all other units declare their, uh, their last fire. So, now, the first one is the one that I really like. And the reason is because your enemy comes in with, you know, something with a big gun, with an autocannon 20. They're coming in to try to rip you apart. First to turn, they run in. Uh, you're moving around a lot. They probably don't have a very good chance to hit you. But now on the next turn, they're going to slow down to a walk. And they're going to try to walk up and shoot you in the face. And that's bad. But at the end of the turn, when they when they just make it into to semi-decent range, and they're in range where you're maybe four hexes from landing in behind them, which is where you want to be, uh, you're going to activate this ability. You're going to pick them. And before they get to move, you're going to jump in behind them. They're not going to get any of those nice movement modifiers. So you're going to be really likely to hit. And if you time it right, you might be able to kill them before they even get to activate, which this could be potentially game winning. Taking out a big gun like that uh, with this ability could absolutely be amazing. It could definitely be worthwhile in regard to taking that damage on your mech warrior. Now, for the Lance I've chosen to make with the 5M. Now, for force building, we're going to be using the force building options, of course, in the new rule book from the Clan Invasion box set. And we're going to be doing a Battle Lance. So, Battle Lance says that 50% of the standard mechs must be of the heavyweight class or greater. At least three units in this formation must also possess any combination of brawler, sniper, or skirmisher so uh we have all that because we have a ton of, of skirmishers and one sniper in this lance that we're going to be making and the ability is that you get six re-rolls throughout the game now with big guns that you really want to make sure they hit their targets which we're going to have some in here those six re-rolls can be huge also being able to re-roll a really key piloting skill roll once in a while can also be really huge when you need to stay standing when someone's done 20 damage or more to you in a single turn, and you really can't afford to fall down this turn. So yeah, so the Battle Star is going to be really awesome. So now let's get into the mechs I have chosen for this Battle Star. In addition to the 5M, we have an Axeman, AXM1N, as in November. Now the Axeman uh, is is just the kind of mech that I was talking about defending yourself against, because we're talking about a mech with an autocannon 20, a hatchet, and at, at 65 tons a hatchet is pretty darn deadly on this thing, three medium lasers, and a large pulse laser so this thing is to run in and attack and intercept 
uh, possibly that mech that's coming towards you. If it gets past you, of course, you can jump in the rear and slam it with your Marauder. But otherwise, this is to come in and, and also then uh, attack enemies on the flank because you don't want to get ganged up on, on with this mech it doesn't have a huge amount of armor you don't want to get ganged up on by multiple mechs but if you can come in and attack a enemy mech on the flank one-on-one -on -one, this thing can do a ton of damage next we have a Whitworth now the Whitworth is a 40 ton mech uh, we took the Whitworth WTH1S uh, this one is a Star League era uh, one of the downsides to this is it does not have case systems for its SRM ammo. Uh, it's got two SRM6s, three medium lasers, it's got a 464 for movement. Uh, but the reason I took this one is it's got a lot of firepower for a very small amount of battle value. It's only 917 battle value. And I wanted to take it so I could fit in the final mech, which is going to be back there uh, holding the back line with the Marauder until those enemies come in close. And then even falling further back while the Marauder jumps in and starts harassing them. And this is the Highlander HGN 7 Three, two. So now this mech has two medium lasers, an LRM-20, a Gauss rifle, and an SRM-6, and is a 90-ton mech that has a jump of three. So again, uh, while this one prefers to use its jump to position to fire long range, because you know you have you do have minimum ranges with both the Gauss rifle and LRM. Uh, 20 you do have the chance uh, and capability of jumping behind a mech and hitting him with an SRM6 and a medium laser while this is not the kind of coring capability that all the pulse lasers have on the Marauder it's still a nice option to have and of course there is always the age-old uh, Highlander tombstone technique where you literally do a death from above with a 90 ton mech which if you have a really good piloting skill on your Highlander could be insane and again depending on on what uh, mech warrior your opponent chose of course you're probably going to be upping the stats of your highlander mech warrior to make him even deadlier now let's talk about my other of my favorite two versions of the marauder that being the 5s now this is the one that falls into the first category of marauders the ones that don't jump the ones that like to find a good well defended spot and play turret tech and hold back and shoot 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 and just tear people apart at a long range Similar to the other Marauder, it's got a movement of a walking of four, a running of six, no jump though, and it's got all the same armor, which is pretty decent. Uh, but where this one excels is firepower. Without the weight being put into those jump jets, this Marauder has a dizzying array of firepower. So again, to remind you, we're dealing with two ERPPCs, two medium lasers, and a Gauss rifle. This is a great amount of firepower to just reach out and touch someone. And again, 16 double heat sinks, meaning that you have 32 points of heat reduction capacity. This mech can get a little hotter than the other one, especially once it starts it's using its medium lasers. But without using its medium lasers, this thing can walk and fire every other weapon without overheating. So the, both the RPPCs and the Gauss rifle and walk every turn of the game without overheating. It's not going to start overheating until you start having to use the medium laser. So that's not until something gets in close. And then once you eliminate whatever's close... If you stand still in a heavy forest and fire everything but the medium lasers, you will reduce your heat one point per turn. It's a slow reduction, but basically, yeah, the main weapons on this thing can fire all day, and that is pretty freaking awesome. Also, this is another clan invasion time period mech, which of course is my favorite types to use because you get the upgraded tech, uh, the biggest upgrade in tech that happened for any time period, in my opinion, is the clan invasion. Going from succession war to clan invasion time period, you get a lot of great stuff. You get the double heat sinks, you get a lot of extra light components and ferro fibers armor and all sorts of cool stuff that you can use. Uh, and it uses a lot of that, like it's got an extra light engine to save some room to make, get this big weapon load out. Um, but then it can be used in a huge number of time periods, which is really awesome. So what Mech Warrior am I going to recommend for the Marauder MAD-5S? So the Mech Warrior I'm going to recommend is Remy Long. Now Remy Long is a three gunnery, four piling skill mech. So this, uh, from the standard uh, gunnery and piling skill, this is going to up you one point each, which has its own positive side to it because it means that you're not giving a huge boost to one of your opponent's mechs and but it's enough of a boost that you are going to be more likely to hit your target and you don't really need a lot of piloting skill roll uh skill with the marauder 5s because it's it's probably not going to be trying to get in and do melees or doing a lot of interesting piloting maneuvers now remy long is a cost two mech warrior so you'd be using him in a game where you had agreed to do uh cost 
two mech warriors and he has the ability lucky two which allows you to do a re-roll to re-roll a failed attack roll or piloting skill roll twice per scenario now the second one has to be accepted but if you already missed the first time why wouldn't you re-roll it uh this is a great ability to have on the 5s for the second lance uh, i am going to be doing a Firestar. Now, Firestar's requirements are that at least 75% of the units in this formation must possess either missile boat or sniper rolls. I've got a bunch of missile boats and snipers in this in this uh, lance. And then the bonus abilities at the beginning of each turn, up to two Firestar units may receive the sniper ability. Now, sniper is awesome because it allows you to reduce the extra difficulty from medium and long range in half. So you only get a uh, plus one difficulty at medium range and a plus two at long range. That's pretty awesome. And it's going to work really well for this Lance, as you're going to see. Okay, so for this Lance, of course, I have the MAD 5S. Uh, now, what mechs are joining the 5S in this 6,000 battle value Lance? So to back up the 5S for some more long range fire, we are going to give him the Archer ARC-4M. Now, this is a 70 ton mech with 20 double heat sinks. Tons of armor. It's got 33 in the center torso, 24 in the side torsos, 30 on each leg, and 22 on each arm. It's got a walking of four, a running of six, and we've got two LRM-20s with Artemis IV fire control systems, meaning lots of those missiles are going to hit their targets. So as you open up holes with your Gauss rifle and your PPCs from your Marauder, you put missiles in the holes with the Archer and cause crits, which is fantastic. Then if an enemy gets too close... We have two medium lasers and also two medium lasers on the rear if something is able to get behind you so you can still return fire to it at least a little bit. Uh, this is a fantastic mech and now makes it uh, with that sniper ability, you're going to probably be picking specifically the archer and the marauder to, to reach out and touch somebody and maybe cripple an enemy mech before it even gets within range because you're going to be hitting them really far away now. So to back up those two long-range mechs, I, I got some mechs that can get kind of closer in uh, to move forward and keep those enemies from closing the distance to your long-range fire support. So the first one I want to talk about is the Wolverine, the WVR-7M. Uh, this version of the Wolverine is really cool, in my opinion, because it comes equipped with mask. And with its mask, it can have a running of 10 now, this is something that you can really run out in front to distract uh, while moving quickly and maybe running into some forest to make it hard to, to, to hit the, this Wolverine. And once it gets in close to your opponents, it's got a jump of five. And then for its weapons, it's got two ER large lasers, an SRM-6, and two medium pulse lasers. So this is another mech to be able to jump in behind your enemies like I had in the other lance, jump in behind your enemies and rip off their rear armor and really uh, start to worry them about you know, turning around to deal with it while having to also deal with the fact that you have the Archer and the Marauder firing at the front of these mechs. Uh, now, this mech has a, a decent amount of armor for its 55 tons, uh, being that it's only a 55-ton mech. It still has 23 armor at the center torso, 20 on each side, 16 on each arm, and 18 on each leg. So not too shabby. Decent amount of firepower. It is possible that this mech could, get to, could take a lot of damage or even be destroyed during the engagement, even if you play perfectly, because, let's face it, it's going to be getting up close and personal with your enemies. But if this is the only mech you lose, that would be a resounding victory. So, yeah, hope, hopefully you can you can make all of your mechs survive, but let's be honest, you're going to lose some. You can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. Finally, we have the Valkyrie, the VLK QD. Now, this is a 30-ton mech with a decent amount of armor and a couple of nice weapons that give it a variety of purposes. So, uh, at 30 tons, we have a move of 585, so it's got five jumping. So, again, like the Wolverine, you can jump in behind an enemy if they're getting too close. This is something you would move forward, but keep behind the Wolverine. Uh, the Wolverine wants to get really close. This is kind of going to be more of your medium range mech in this lance. It's got 12 armor on each side torso. It's got 16 armor on the center torso, 10 on each arm, and 14 on each leg, which is not bad for a 30 ton mech. And then it's armed with an LRM 10 with an Artemis 4 and a medium pulse laser. So you're going to walk forward. You're going to be firing that LRM 10 to back up the fire coming from your two other long range mechs. And then you're going to walk in front because if something gets close to you, you can jump in behind them and hit them with that one pulse laser. Now that's not 
super scary, but it is a fairly affordable mech that can take a little bit of fire before uh, really getting hurt and can hopefully distract from the real point of this lance, which, of course, in my opinion, is the Marauder and the Archer. So there you have it. That is my breakdown of the Marauder. The Marauder is an awesome mech with tons of, of variants. Some are better than others. Uh, I went over two of my favorites. And the thing is this, like, I... I feel like the two things, when I look at the original Marauders, the two things I would want to do when you get to the clan invasion time period and later is I would want a Gauss rifle on one and I would want one that can jump with pulse weapons. And they made those, which is why I did not feel I needed to do a custom one of this one. I have never made a custom Marauder. And that's why, because they already did what I would have done. Uh, but yeah, let me know in the comments down below what you think of the Marauder. What is your favorite version of the Marauder? Also, let me know in the comments down below uh, what you thought of this video. And I am going to be trying to cover every mech from the Star League clan invasion and succession war time periods first before moving on because those are my favorite time periods let me know what mech i should try to cover next in another episode of grokking battletech and until next time game on